I recently read the book, A Mind for Numbers by Barbara Oakley. Barbara is an engineering professor at the University of Oakland. And you would think that she has a natural ability for math and science, but you'd be wrong. You see, Barbara flunked out of elementary, middle and high school math and science. At a young age, she swore never to study math and science because she didn't think she had a natural talent for it. After school, she joined the military and became a Russian translator. However, when she got out of the military, she found that finding work was hard. Her time in the military working with engineers had shown her the opportunities that learning math and science can provide, but still thought she couldn't learn it. She ignored her beliefs and decided to take on the challenge of learning math and science once and for all at the age of 26. Barbara decided the only way to do so was to learn how to learn. As Barbara started to master new learning techniques, math and science became easier. The better she got, the more she enjoyed doing it. Barbara became a professor of engineering ultimately because she learned that she could learn anything when she was equipped with the right learning techniques. Among all the learning techniques in this book, the one that stands out above all the rest is having the ability to frequently switch between focus and diffuse modes of thinking. Barbara uses the analogy of flashlights to describe the difference between focus and diffuse thinking. Focus mode is concentrated attention. It's using sequential and logical thought. Diffuse mode is relaxed attention, allowing your brain to consider a wide range of things. It's like a daydreaming state where we don't think about any one thing in particular. In this state, we allow our subconscious to solve problems. And it makes sense why we'd have these two modes of thinking. As hunters and gatherers, if we were out gathering food, we'd have to focus on finding the right food, but we'd occasionally have to expand our focus to focus on a wide range of possible threats. Otherwise, we wouldn't last very long. So the ones who survived developed the ability to routinely switch between these two modes of thinking. Neuroscientists have confirmed this. They observe people operating in two modes. While in focus mode, we are operating in the prefrontal cortex, a small area in front of the brain. In diffuse mode, we are operating in many regions around the brain. When we have a period of focus mode thinking, followed by a period of diffuse mode thinking, we take the ideas gathered from the focus mode and allow them to bounce around the brain and access a wide range of areas that are available while in the diffuse mode, at which time those ideas can make comparisons and connections to knowledge we've obtained over a lifetime. How well you learn is determined by how effectively and how frequently you switch between the two modes of thinking. The most effective way to utilize these two modes while trying to learn something is to spend a dedicated period of time in focus mode, getting yourself into a state where you are focused on one thing and you block out distractions for a period of time. Barbara recommends using the Pomodoro method for this. That means setting a timer for 25 minutes and committing to taking action on one thing for 25 minutes. At first it's painful, but eventually you will mobilize your focus mode. After the 25 minutes is up, you take a five minute break, and then you return back to focusing for 25 minutes. However, after a few rounds of focusing, if you get stuck, then it's time to go into diffuse mode. It's time to quit. It's okay to quit. Quitting at that point and stepping away into a diffuse mode is exactly what your brain needs to have the insight that will move you over that wall. Three-time best-selling author Nassim Taleb recently said in an interview that he never gets writer's block. He says, quote, The minute I'm stuck, I don't try to make an effort. I just walk. And when I come back, it just all pours out on its own. Nassim's walk is his way of going into the diffuse mode. Well, in that mode, he gets a better understanding of what he's writing about and the problem he's trying to solve. Taking a break to let your mind wander is the most important part to receiving a breakthrough in your understanding of what you're trying to learn. Thomas Edison was said to have sat down whenever he reached a tough problem. He would have two ball bearings in his hand, and he would attempt to doze off. After a few minutes, he would fall asleep, and the two ball bearings would fall out of his hand onto the floor, waking him up. And that was his trigger to get back to work. When he returned to his work, he often had a new insight, a new understanding. So the next time you were trying to learn something, focus as intensely as you can. Try using the Pomodoro method. Set a timer and commit yourself to focus until that timer is up. But after your focus has ran its course, once you've hit a wall of confusion and frustration, 
you need to step away and not feel guilty about it. It's your brain's natural way of learning, and it's one of the most effective learning techniques that Barbara Oakley has found to learn and master any material, regardless of how difficult or unnatural what you're trying to learn may seem to you. That was the core message that I gathered from Barbara Oakley's great book. I highly recommend it if you want to learn more about learning. If you would like a one-page PDF summary of the other insights on learning that I gathered from Barbara's book, just click the link below and I'd be happy to email it to you. If you already subscribe to the free Productivity Game newsletter, this PDF is already in your inbox. Thanks for watching.